Hello and welcome to another video on Inkscape. In this video we're going to be looking at logo design. I'm going to build up a logo using some simple techniques and basic shapes and then I'm going to show you a clever trick to convert these construction lines into a solid logo. To get started I'm going to get rid of the page border so I'm going to go up to File, down to Document Properties and we're going to just turn off show page border and then get rid of our document properties i'm going to use the rectangle tool to draw out a rectangle for our links of the chain i'm going to use the circular handle drag that down to round the ends so this is going to be the outside of our chain link oh, one thing i want to do beforehand Later on, I'm going to be using um, snapping and snapping to boundary boxes or midpoints of boundary boxes. So when I snap to the midpoint of boundary box, I want that boundary box to be on the path and not on the edge of a stroke. So what I'm going to do is turn off the stroke. So if we hold down shift, come down to the bottom left and click on the X to get rid of the stroke. So now the boundary border is on the path and not sitting on the outside of a stroke. So next step is I want to draw the inside of my link. So to do this, I'm going to get my selection tool. I'm going to press Control D to duplicate this shape. I'm going to change the color. We go for a darker blue. I'm then going to use um, dynamic offsets. So we go up to path, down to dynamic offsets, click on that, and we get a little diamond appear at the top of our our link. If we drag down on that we can drag in the shape till we've got a nice so the light blue is a nice thickness for our chain link. I think that'll do me. The next thing I want to do is I want to create a little border on the inside and a border on the outside. To do this I'm going to use inset and outset. So if we come up to path and down we've got inset and outset. Now these have got keyboard shortcuts. This steps it in and out by um, two pixel increments. So we can count how many times we step it in and then do the same on the outside. So we get the same size border around the edge as we do on the inside of our chain link. So to get started, I'm going to need to do Control D to duplicate again. I'll change the color. Go back to blue or pale blue. I'm then going to, or aqua as it calls it down the bottom, I'm then going to use control open bracket to take it in. So we count how many how many times we do this. So that's one, two, three, I think three will do. Now we select our outer shape, press control D to duplicate. We do the darker blue again. And or was it that one? I can't remember. We go for that one. I'm going to drop that to the back, so I'm going to get my selection tool. I'm going to just drop this to the bottom. I'm then going to press Control, close brackets, one, two, three, to create our outer border. So now we've created all these. Drag a selection box over the whole lot. I'm going to come up to the top, and I'm going to click on the uh, fill and stroke dialog button, which brings up our fill and stroke dialog box. I'm then going to come down to the bottom. I'm just, just going to reduce the opacity down to about halfway. I'm then going to press Control D to duplicate. I'm going to come over. I'm going to click on, uh, turn the snapping on. So snapping's enabled. We're going to snap to boundary boxes. And we want to be snapping to boundary box midpoints or edge midpoints. I'm then going to hold down Control to constrain it to vertical movement. I'm going to drag down on our let's zoom in a little bit hold down control drag down so now we've got the links of the chain sitting nicely overlapping so when we we cut away the elements that we don't want we should be left with a nicely linked chain i want to come down and do exactly the same to the bottom so now our our links are nicely lined up where we want them the next step to drawing our logo is to create the circle border that goes around the outside. So I'm going to come over, get the ellipse tool, 
and I'm going to which color should we go for? We'll go for a, a light pink, I think. So hold down control to constrain it to a circle. We've got snapping to midpoints. So if we turn off borders down the bottom here, we've got snapping to midpoints and snapping to rotational centers. So now if we get our selection tool and drag this over, it should nicely snap to the midpoint here. I'm going to reduce the size of the circle so that it cuts the top of these, these links. I'm going to hold down shift and control uh, to scale it around the center point. About there. Control D to duplicate again. I'm going to hold down shift and control once again. And I'm going to drag these in until I've got a nice border width. Think about there. Now what I'm going to do, now we've got all the lines in place, and they're all lined up exactly how we want them. We can get rid of the fill and just put a thin line on. So it just makes the whole image clearer. So we're going to come up, we've got our selection tool. I'm going to drag a box over the whole, whole lot. We're going to get rid of our fill. We're going to hold down shift and we're going to click on the black down the bottom. I'm then going to go up to path, down to combine combine all the different elements together into one big path. Now we've got all these lines drawn, we want to be able to get rid of all the little elements that we don't want and keep the sections that we do want. A clever way of doing this is to grab our rectangle tool and we're going to just drag a rectangle over the top of our design. We're then going to drop it to the back, so we've got our selection tool, so we drop it to the back, we give it some colour, we're then going to hold down shift, select our construction lines, and then we're going to go up to path and down to division. Now what this has done is used the construction lines to chop the rectangle into all these different individual elements. So now we can click on the bits that we don't want and press delete and get rid of them. So now it's just a process of going through and deleting all the different elements that we don't want. I'll quickly show you a nice way you can select multiple elements in one go. So if we zoom in a little bit, we know that we don't want any of this section. So what we can do is if you hold down the Alt key with your selection tool selected, we can draw over some of these bits and everything that the line crosses becomes selected. So then when you press delete, you can get rid of multiple sections in one go. I'll get on doing this and get back to you afterwards. Now we've got the elements of the logo that we want remaining. We can drag a box over the whole lot, go up to path, union. So the last little adjustments that I want to make now is I want to rotate it 45 degrees. So if we click on our logo, hold down control, which will constrain it to increments of 15 degrees, then we can one, two, three, and we've got it around to 45 degrees. I'm then going to change it to the color I want, say dark blue. And there we have our chain logo. So we could also come up to, if we selected all of it, we could come up to path, break apart, and that would give us our individual elements. So then we could click off, select our links. We could then change different links to different colors. What should we go for this time? Green. And I think lastly, I'm going to remove these two sections of the outer ring and I'm going to darken up the outside circle. And I think that would do us for our logo. Hope that's been helpful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.